Good morning. Good morning. Fourth of July. What happens on that day? Come on, come on, come on. Ah, you're right. Brooklyn Tabernacle opens after ugh, so many months closed. Bye-bye pandemic. Adios, muchacho. Go. And we're going to open 9 o'clock and 12 noon. Two solo dos servicios. Cultos. And uh, 9 and 12. Oh, get vaccinated. Are you not vaccinated yet? Get vaccinated. I've been vaccinated. Carol has. Are you leery of getting vaccinated? Then don't get vaccinated. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. You feel too fearful about coming out that day, the 4th of July? Then we're going to miss you. But uh, I hope you can get there soon. Oh, are we going to praise God? 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Oh, what a day that will be. So remember, and bring someone with you. Can't come in by yourself. You mean all your neighbors and friends and people who have been heartbroken, lost family members, worried about whatever, made it through the pandemic. You can't invite someone to come to church and say we're going to have a celebration. Let's do it. End of chapter 4, Romans. Speaking about, let's pick it up from our yesterday, uh, about Abraham. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness, because he believed God and was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. The promise that he got from God would come to pass. Verse 23, the words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. This is Gospel 101. Now we are in the epicenter of the Gospel. Listen. The words, it was credited to him. Abraham was accepted by God, and it was credited to him that he was perfect, as perfect as Jesus is. Oh, Pastor, you're getting radical. No, it's a radical Bible. It was credited to him as perfect righteousness. Why was it credited to him? He, because he believed. But it was written about him in Genesis, and again here in Romans, not just for him only, but for us. How for us? To whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. In other words, Abraham believed God concerning a promise about what God was going to do in his life. But that same principle of justification by faith, I believe God and God says, you believe in my promise? I credit it as your perfect standing with me. Now, Paul says this, for us who believe that Jesus was sent by a loving God to die for our sins and pay the price on the cross of Calvary, that faith is credited to us as if we've never sinned in our lives. Oh, come on. Pastor Simba, get real. How could that be so? Because what a mighty God we serve. We have a mighty God, awesome God, loving God. He said it. And many of us think it's too good to be true, and we miss out. And God is saying, only believe. Would you believe? Would you please take the gift? So Abraham is our model. He's our father in the faith, shall we say. Why? He believed God, and God accepted and blessed, and he prospered under God's hand. Why? Because he was a good boy? No, because he believed. What can I say? I find myself repeating myself. But I'm doing it because the Bible keeps repeating itself. What does repetition in the Bible always mean? Emphasis. 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 So God is telling us Follow in the footsteps of Abraham. Trust me. Walk by faith. He, Jesus, was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Delivered over to death for our sins. 
Christ died on the cross for our sins. Do you get it? Oh, God, help me to be a better teacher. Christ hung on the cross. God put all of your sins, my sins, on him. He punished him. He had no sin. Oh, no, he punished him for your sin and my sin. It was all laid on him. Now we're forgiven if we believe that. If you believe that you're a sinner and God put your sin on Christ and he died for your sins, you are good to go. And he was raised for our justification, which proved that Satan was defeated. The, uh, the father of sin, the one who brings condemnation, by raising Jesus from the dead, it proved that acceptance was made by God. When Jesus said it is finished, it was finished. God paid the price. Oh, song comes to me. I'm little. My mother's standing next to me, my blessed mother. Do you know that song? He was nailed to the cross for me. He was nailed to the cross for me. On the cross crucified, for me he died. He was nailed to the cross for me. Sing that to the devil when he comes. You're not what you should be. Look what you've done. He was nailed to the cross. Bye-bye, Diablo. Satan has to go. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. That's the foundation of our religion. He died for our sins. And when he was raised from the dead, it proved he wasn't a, a regular guy who had to die for his own sins. No, the tomb couldn't hold him. He proved to be the Son of God. Makes you want to get happy, right? I, I, I fluctuate. Any of you like me, when I get real happy, I cry and get quiet. When I get really happy. When I'm shouting and all of that, I'm happy and that that's a but deep happiness. When I propose to my wife, I ever tell you about that? I won't go into it. But I handed her the ring and I cried. I didn't go, we're gonna get married, we're gonna get married. No. He was nailed to the cross for me. Doesn't that make you tender today? Doesn't it make you love him more? Don't you want to make him happy today? Come on, let's make him happy. After all he's done for us, let's walk with him and trust him all day long. God bless you.